Good morning and a very warm welcome to all. Today we are going to discuss about the mechanism of action of commonly used antibiotics. In the last session we have discussed the history and the introduction and the uh, characteristics of an ideal antibiotic. Today, the pathogenic microorganisms which can infect the tissues of human by destroying cellular function. So, these microorganisms actually infect the human beings by destroying our cellular function. So, the microorganisms themselves or the toxin can cause damage to the host cell. And then the microbial infections which are treated with antimicrobials. This can be either inhibiting the microbial growth or killing the microorganism. So these are the two mechanisms. Either it kills the microorganism or it inhibits the microbial growth, bactericidal or bacteriostatic. So the antibiotics are widely being used not only in the treatment of acute and chronic infections but also it can be used in the prophylactic treatment. Now, what are the targets of antimicrobials? The targets of antimicrobials are mainly cell membrane, then cell wall, then protein synthesis, <coughs> nucleic acid synthesis, then biological metabolic compound synthesis. So, these are the main targets of antimicrobials. Picture. This is uh, uh, first is disruption of selective membrane permeability. Then it can degradation and of the structure and function of the cell wall. Then it can cause inhibition of the metabolic biologic compound synthesis. Then it can block replication, block transcription. Then it can inhibit the folate and dihydrofolate and folate synthesis and the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase and also it can inhibit the protein synthesis within the bacterial cell. So this is the summary of the targets of antimicrobials. Now what are the cause of the bacteria to develop resistance to the antimicrobials? This can be either due to over usage or dosage of antibiotics then sometimes there may be mutations occur in the genes or there are certain genes which are carrying resistance in the chromosomes and plasmids. This can be transferred from one bacteria to another or sometimes those bacteria gain resistant genes which are carried by transposons. Transposons are jumping genes. So this can be acquired by some bacteria. Then due to insertion sequences and also finally conjugation from the same or other species of microorganisms. That means transfer of genetic material. So these are the main reasons for developing antimicrobial drug resistance. Now first of all what are the different action mechanisms of antibiotics. So we have discussed we have already told that cell it affects cell membrane cell wall, uh, DNA, uh, nucleic acid synthesis, protein synthesis, etc. So, we can first discuss the action of antibiotics which may cause injury to the cell membrane. Actually, the cell membrane is nothing but plasma membrane. It is the plasma membrane of the microorganism. It may contribute active transport. So, active transport takes place in plasma membrane to gain energy as ATP. Then the cytoplasmic content and the gradients such as micro and macro molecules and ions. These are controlled by active transport mechanism. That is with the help of integral active transporter proteins. So this helps in maintaining a cytoplasmic content and gradients. When this selective membrane permeability, so this may result in a selective membrane permeability. 
when this selective membrane permeability is disrupted by antimicrobials, ions are lost and cellular iron gradient is distorted. So what happens? The organism undergoes cellular damage and death due to the leakage of contents. The plasma membrane of the bacteria, actually they are constructed with fatty acids that can be synthesized within the cell or which can be taken from the environment as building blocks. So the main targets of this antimicrobials are metabolic steps of fatty acid synthesis and membrane phospholipids. So the main targets of the antimicrobials within the cell membrane is metabolic steps of fatty acid synthesis and membrane phospholipids present in the cell membrane. So now I am giving, I had given the examples of those antimicrobials which causes injury to the cell membrane. First one is polymyxin B. It has a bactericidal action and it can be used as one of the very few drugs in the treatment of gram-negative bacteria such as Pseudomonas. Then another one is Valinomycin. That is an ionophore which disrupts the cell membrane potential and what happens uh, and as a result the oxidative phosphorylation that means synthesis of this ATP disrupts by forming pores within the cell membrane. So this valinomycin disrupts cell membrane, forms pores in the cell membrane and it is this potential that contributes to the oxidative phosphorylation. So it may, it may cause the uh, disruption of this oxidative phosphorylation. Finally, ATP synthesis can be disrupted. Next is daphthomycin. These are also widely used in bloodstream infections, wound and soft skin infections and and also another one is uh, caused by beta lactam uh, antibiotic that is especially vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus this may disrupts so this daptomycin can be used against uh, vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus so these are the this actually this is an important question staphylococcus aureus is normally resistant to this vancomycin antibiotic but now because of the transfer of certain genes or mutation in certain genes now this staphylococcus aureus developed some strains of staphylococcus aureus developed resistance to this vancomycin and such strains are called vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus and they disrupt the membrane potential by depolarization that means potassium ions are released from the cytoplasm to the extracellular matrix that means the potassium ions are released and it may cause disruption in the uh, membrane potential so to this VRSA that is vancomycin resistant staphylococcus aureus, daphthomycin can be used. Next is about cell wall synthesis. Actually the cell walls of the microorganisms are constructed by peptidoglycan. Now peptidoglycan it is an important that it, the strands are linked by two glycans that are N acetyl muromic acid and N acetyl glucosamine. So, this glycan polysaccharide strands are linked by crosslink that bind the polypeptides. And this NAM and NAG bound, these are the two glycans, this bound to the polypeptides. So, and this their synthesis takes place in cytoplasm. And the bacteprinol, it is the protein that transport them to the cell wall. After bacteprinol, which is a membrane bound acceptor, it transfers UDP NAM pentapeptide and UDP NAG from the cytoplasm. So these are the components 
of peptidoglycan they synthesize within the cytoplasm and after synthesis they move towards the outer side of the cell membrane that is within the cell wall and this process is called transglycosylation and transpeptidation reactions and these reactions are actually catalyzed by the proteins called penicillin binding proteins appi penicillin binding proteins aanu ee already cytoplasmic cytoplasmic udp nam pentapeptide nam udp nag nam transport cheyan sahayikkunnathu and these are bound to this penicillin binding proteins are bound to the cell membrane as dd peptidases so this are helpful for constructing peptidoglycan now what happens certain antibiotics such as beta lactam antibiotics they react with this penicillin binding proteins appo so, beta lactam antibiotics react cheynathu ee penicillin binding proteins nethan those having high affinity to this beta lactams and this may bind to penicillin binding proteins as a substrate so these drugs beta lactams are structural analogs to the acyl d alanyl d alanyl that binds actually this is the peptide molecule that bind to the active site of pbp but instead of this beta lactam gets bind to the pbp penicillin binding protein during the transpeptidation reaction so what happens this transpeptidation reaction gets blocked by this antibiotics inactivating transpeptidase domain of pbps so and so the microorganisms are killed by this cell wall inhibitors cell wall inhibitors are beta lactams that and in turn it inhibits the peptidoglycan biosynthesis so peptidoglycan synthesis doesn't takes place no transpeptidation reaction takes place finally microorganisms get killed so this is the mechanism of action of those which in causing the uh, disruption of cell wall synthesis next is about inhibition of metabolic biological compounds this biological metabolic reactions in the body of the bacteria this are catabolized with the enzymes that are and these enzymes are activated by substrates synthesis of this metabolic biological compounds uh, this can be inhibited by certain drugs as competitive inhibition manner we have already studied in enzymes about competitive inhibition appo ee competitive inhibition mechanism vechitte this metabolic biological compounds can be inhibited okay appo idinodu saamyulla vera molecules enzyme they may act as a substrate and this may bind to the active site of enzyme appo instead of this molecule metabolic biological molecules ku pagaram inhibitor poite enzyme le poi bind cheyi angane the synthesis of this metabolic reaction molecules get disrupted so drugs that are structural analogs of substrate this may act as substrate appo njan parnu thanneyana chela drugs substrate node saamya ulladayikkum they may act to the enzyme binding sites instead of substrates and it may inhibit what metabolic reactions example para amino benzoic acid is an ex- substrate for folic acid synthesis folic bacteria il nadakkuna folic acid synthesis inde important substrate aanu paba appo that is a coenzyme in the reaction of purine pyrimidine amino acids in the synthesis like a coenzyme it act cheynadan appo adinodu saamya ulladana sulfanilamide and 345 trimethoxy benzyl pyrimidine these are the examples of drugs which inhibit the synthesis of metabolic biological compounds appo ivaru poite a substrate ne pagaram ivaru poi bind cheyi appo endu sambhavikka the metabolic reactions avada block avum appo metabolic compounds synthesize avilla so it may affect the bacteria self appo ee drugs ni parayna peraan sulfa drugs this has been used in many infections such as urinary tract infections so it is widely used in combination with other compounds such as silver sulfadiazine 
it is one of the combined drug used in burn infections.